Hello, everyone. This is Worldwide Worldview Talk Show. Reggie Amis is our product and uh, our producer and director, and I have the honor of being here with a, a gentleman by the name of uh, Rabbi Sunsman, and I'd like to ask him to let you know who he is. Okay. Uh, I'm Rabbi Gerald Sussman, and I'm the rabbi of Temple Emanuel, which is located in Port Richmond. I've been there for 41 years, and uh, Temple Emanuel is the oldest uh, synagogue on Staten Island, and it's a very lovely group of people and uh, in an interesting neighborhood, and I, I like being the rabbi there, and uh, uh, I'm also quite involved with uh, interfaith uh, things and, and, and so forth. Thank you, Barbara. My name is Pastor John Carlo. I uh, am a pastor at Christian Pentecostal Church, the oldest Pentecostal church on Staten Island. And I was also a police officer for 28 years and went out as a captain. So between us, we've seen a lot of things. <laughs> yes, we have. We're here to talk about something that's happening right now. This war in, in Israel and Hamas and all of these different things. What does it mean to us? How does it affect us? What do you think, Rabbi? Well, first, I want to wish everybody a happy Hanukkah. And uh, Hanukkah is the festival of light. And one of the messages of Hanukkah is to try to bring light into the world through acts of kindness and, and, and good deeds and so forth. And um, when, the, when the war first started after October 7th, when were the horrible massacres, um, a son of mine who's a college student at Yeshiva University, a grandson of mine, decided that he'd do something. And he put out that on a certain day, everybody should do extra good deeds to, contra to bring light into the world in contrast to the darkness. And so that's, that's a good message. But Hanukkah also commemorates a historical event. And that event is the victory, the military victory of the Greek of the, of, the, of the Jews over the Greeks in ancient times and the rededication of the temple and the regaining of in Jewish independence. So uh, if not for the victory of the Maccabees, then Judaism would have kind of faded away around that time and there would be no Christmas either because Chris, the Christianity Christmas comes out of the Jewish background of that of those er, of that time, and uh, October seventh was such a devastating day that uh, the day is uh, uh, it the the just before here in Israel it actually was a day because the calendar is slightly different of the holiday of Simchat Torah, which commemorates the reading of the full reading of the scriptural cycle of the, all the Torah and then we begin again we finish we, sh we finish with the end of Deuteronomy and we start again with with uh, the creation of the world in Genesis so it's a it's a fun day and a happy day and we began to get news that something happened in Israel and I think it took a long time for that news to sink in and it was really um, a, a horrible massacre of over a thousand people figured out now to be 1,200 people were murdered. That the murderers, the terrorists, went from house to house, killing people, torturing them, sexually abusing women, uh, doing things that are unheard of, beheading babies. Now, in all the cruel history of the world, there are very few instances of that kind of cruelty. And what made it even worse is that the people who did it weren't ashamed of it. And uh, they sent, they recorded it on, on videos and sent the pictures of what they were doing to family members and friends and were, were, very, were very proud. And this, this kind of violence, especially the sexual violence, was so pervasive that it must have been uh, part of the plan. So that's something. So that just, we were just so shocked. We, we couldn't, almost couldn't believe that such a thing had happened. And what was very shocking also to us here in, in the United States is that 
there were a surprising number of people, especially in the, the universities, the top universities that we think of as citadels of reason and reasonableness and intelligence and so forth, who supported this behavior, who supported the attack on Israel. Um, and when what I would have expected, knowing that there are people who are against the state of Israel and all of that, they would have said, well, we condemn the outrages but we don't like Israel because of X, Y, Z reasons. But many of them didn't say that. They justified it. And how could one justify the, the, the murder of children and, and middle-aged people and elderly people and just going about their business on a Saturday morning? Just uh, many of them just kind of waking up in the morning and they find this. And so that was particularly shocking. And I think in the Jewish community, we've lost the sense of security that, that we once had. Hmm. Do you think there's a solution? Do I think there's a solution? Well, a solution is a solution is hard. Well, one of the solutions would be what the Israeli policy has been to get rid of the organization Hamas as rulers of Gaza and as an important uh, factor in the world. Because one, why did Hamas do this? Um, well. It's part of their program, and it's found in all their documents. Uh, they're not shy about it. You know, if you want to find out what Hamas is about, you should read what they write and what they and listen to what they say. Um, and part of their program is to eliminate the state of Israel. That the state of Israel is something that shouldn't exist, shouldn't be. Uh, that Jews have no right to be there. And uh, you know what, what's, what's said, not just by Hamas circles, but by others, uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free. And what does that mean? Does that, what, so if God forbid, that side, Hamas and others, would win, what would they do to the Israelis? Is their plan genocide? Or doing something similar to what was done on October 7th? Well. We don't know. So I think the first part of the solution would be for groups like Hamas not to be in power. And um, there's uh, also very reasonable forces in the Arab world. I've, uh, a month or two ago, I attended a meeting at the United Nations, and there were representatives of the Jewish community and also of the both the, some political leaders and religious leaders from the Gulf states. And they talked about reconciliation. And they, uh, talking to them and, and listening to what they were saying, they were really sincere about reconciliation between Arabs and Jews and people living in peace and recognizing uh, the sovereignty of God together, each in their di somewhat different ways. So I think, uh, and I think that's probably just part of the reason why Hamas did what they did, so that their cause would be, uh, would, would not be forgotten and moved to the foreground. So I think maybe that's uh, an, an answer, one, to defeat the forces of terrorism, of violent terrorism that groups like Hamas represent, and to um, engage in meaningful and, and civil relations with people in that part of the world who would want to. I think there are many people in Israel who would want to, but I think after this attack, fewer than there were. Uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the ironies of the whole situation that the communities were attacked, that were attacked, were centers of the Israeli peace movement and where uh, people tried to cultivate good relationships with the people in Gaza on the other side of the fence and doing things like um, meeting, of course, there, there's a, 
a system, there was a system in which people who had certain illnesses, particularly cancer, got their treatment in Israel, particularly at the Hadassah Hospital in Jerusalem. And there were volunteers who would meet them at the border and drive them to their hospital appointments and look after them. And it's just those communities which were hit the hardest. You know, so I wonder what those people think now. Someone told me a story a couple days ago in which she said that there was a woman who lived in one of those communities who on the Israeli Memorial Day when they would uh, mark and honor Israeli soldiers who had fallen in battle, she also would have a ceremony to honor the Arabs who were, who were killed fighting Israel. And the other thing I heard is that the pieces of this woman's body were found scattered all over uh, the, the place that she lived. So whether, um, so I, I hope that people will want to engage, but it's harder than it was. You're absolutely right. The thing that uh, bothers me about it is that if you go back in the history biblically, you'll always see the Jewish people getting in trouble. <laughs> some of it was their own fault, and some of it was just the people, people of people. But every same type, they went, they were, they were captured, they were, they were made slaves of and all that. The good thing, the good news is God always got them out of there. I mean, there was a time period where they had to stay in Egypt, for example, and they were slaves. And the day came when God raised up one man who wasn't expecting to be the leader to lead them out. And of course, you know the story, it was something that the world doesn't have. With all the weapons that we have, God has weapons that you can't even imagine when you can hold back rivers and, and cause the, the sun to stop and all these different things. The amazing thing about the whole thing is that, as you said, people would have to sit down at a table, and it's a give-and-take thing. But some people just like trouble. Yeah. No, no matter how many things you try to do for them, they're going to cause trouble. Now, in, in my reading of the book of Revelation, which is interesting, at the end of the world, Israel's still there. In fact, even then, in, in, the, in the history going forward, Israel is going to play a major part when all these different uh, people come from different countries and try to overcome God. And of course, we know they lose. But the thing is that it, people who don't like the Jewish people, I think a lot of them are just jealous because God has blessed them. Wherever they've gone, they, God has blessed them and protected them too. And unfortunately, some of them did pass, uh, were killed and so on and so forth. Not that we would like to see that, but the thing is there will always be terrorist people. I, thought, I had mentioned before I was a policeman and I've seen people do things. It doesn't make any sense. They'll harm people that have not done nothing wrong with them or to them and, and even cause things to happen, and they're proud of it. It's kind of like a sickness. In the Bible, we would say it's some kind of demonic uh, uh, oppression that these people have, and I've seen it. I've, I've seen people... Uh, even young children throw four or five, four, six cops across a room. And you stand there looking, how in the world did that happen? And they have like a super force. And I think the same thing plays out in the mind. People think they can do anything, and they can't. I mean, God created all these wonderful things for us, and we're destroying them, our own planet. I mean, war is not the answer. No one wins. We've learned that, I think, even in my lifetime. I think the rabbi would, you can fight all kinds of wars and people still have hate and people will still do the foolish things and try to take something that don't belong to them. Did you want to say something? Right, well, I, I think that's somehow part of how people are. Not everyone, No. but. Um, enough and, to make a difference enough though. Enough to make a difference. Yeah. And people, even people who do terrible things often think they're doing the right. I know. That they're fighters for justice and, 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 and so forth. And sometimes even, and I, I, you can see that with uh, 
the, the communists of the former Soviet Union, they were thinking that they're going to make through their philosophy and ideas the perfect, beautiful, and just world. Instead, they created the opposite. Yeah. So, um, you know, so people, it's easy for people to delude themselves. Look at Adolf Hitler. Yeah. He almost won the war. Well, he, he came very close yeah, to it. Yeah. And, um, and a lot of intelligent people followed him. Yes. And they followed him. And, and even ones who might not have fully supported him went along. Yeah. And, you know, they don't want to cause waves. They don't want to do whatever. But uh, so I, I think that's, um, that's part, of, part of what's going on. And I think as far as our story as Jews, you know, on Hanukkah we light the candles. And we light eight candles that commemorates the miracle that the, the, the oil, when, when the Maccabees rededicated the Holy Temple, mm -hmm. the oil was supposed to last for one day, but it lasted eight. So we have eight lights each day, one more. And the reason for that is in, in the rabbinic texts is that we should, was the one rabbi proposed, no, we should start with eight and have one less each day. And the side that went out said, no, when it comes to holiness, we always try to increase yeah. and never decrease. But uh, figuratively speaking, the light that was lit then has been burning not for eight days, but for well over 2,000 years. Right. And the Jewish people and the Jewish faith uh, have endured. And I think that's an inspirational thing. And we've endured not as a people of conquest, but a people of service, people who try to do good in the world and to make things better and to live uh, lives of kindness and and service. And so I just mentioned to you uh, some people in Israel who define their kindness and service as, as being of service to people who may have th themselves thought of them as the enemy. Um, now, for example, uh, Sinwar, who is the head of Hamas, mm -hmm. um, he served a long prison sentence in Israel, and he was let go in one of the prisoner exchanges. There was a man by the name of Gilad Shalit who was ki kidnapped and, and imprisoned in Gaza, and the Israeli government exchanged a 1,000 prisoners for this one. And so uh, Sinwar returned to Gaza and eventually became the leader of Hamas. But in Israeli prison, he studied, and he also received a brain operation. Uh -huh. And he had, I think it was either a brain tumor or some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, vascular disorder in the brain, and he was taken to an Israeli hospital, and he was cured. And so um, that people, so the, the interesting dynamic is that people in Israel said, based on their Jewish values, said, well, you know, we have to help people, we have to do the right by them. But some of the people, um, I'm sure there were many who were grateful when they were treated well right. and rescued, as he was, but the, some, some were not. And he learned the culture and the ways of Israelis and now was trying to use that to destroy. So, uh, but the, uh, the, uh, the lesson and the message is um, to keep on trying to be the person and the kind of people who bring light into the world rather than darkness. And uh, it's very unfortunate that this struggle is going on now, and uh, pe people in Israel have been killed, and many people in Gaza as well, but it is something that really didn't need to be. Right. And uh, uh, part of the reason why there was the surprise attack successful successfully is that people in Israel felt that the Gazans were beginning to engage with them and the leaders of Hamas were emphasizing uh, the welfare of the people who live there rather than fighting Israel but uh, turned out they were wrong yeah you know it's interesting like everything you said is good but there are people who don't want good things to happen they enjoy the darkness they enjoy the hatred they live off it they even hate each other the interesting thing is that 
I, I, as I mentioned before, I had visited it, um, Israel, and we were there, especially in uh, different parts of where you, you saw that the, uh, the Arabs and the Jews getting along. They worked there. In fact, I, I, I turned around and I said, both sides look the same. You know what I'm saying? When you look at them, they're dressed differently, but they, they're cousins. Yeah. <laughs> they're family, going back many, many, many uh, generations. And you would think that people who are so intelligent could sit down at a table and say, what's wrong? Can we fix it? Can we do it together? That's the thing. How do you get people who are very hatred type people to sit at the table? I mean, killing them doesn't solve the problem. And, you know, as far as everybody else, it may stop one or two people, but there's always there going to be a replacement. Right. How would you well, get these people to sit down together? I think there's, there's no magic formula. But I think if the people who are more reasonable and more, let's say, life affirming and value each life, um, in an infinite way, th they would sit down together and make some kind of uh, agreement and so forth, and it would be accepted, then the others perhaps would find themselves up in a position where they have to go along with it. But, but uh, I don't know how to change people's opinions, because I think there's something about, about human nature that people try to stay on and stick to their, mm -hmm. their hatreds and prejudices. And, but and where does it so stop? Forth. Where does it I stop? I mean, how can you keep being prejudiced? There'll be nobody left. Uh, well. <laughs> the animals would enjoy that. <laughs> right, maybe they would. <laughs> but, uh, and you know, now, um, humankind has the ability to yeah, destroy yeah. humanity. Or rebuild it. Or rebuild it. Or so we have before us, I guess as is written in the Bible, we have the choice of life and death. So yeah. we should choose yeah. life yeah. because there's so many things that are going on now that are wonderful that could so enhance the quality of life and health and the length of life and and um, the, the well being of people. Working together. Yeah. But but uh, and uh, but we have to look at the both sides of it, there's a lot of working together mm -hmm. in the world. and uh, But not enough. And there needs to be more. For example, in Israel, um, around half of the graduates from medical school now are Arabs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people who serve everybody. Um, and so there's, there's, there's a lot of goodness and there's a lot of co cooperation. But it somehow, when these kinds of things come up, uh, we have to be really make a very big effort that it doesn't tear apart the goodness and cooperation the reconciliation, that exists. Yeah. Because I think through that, there could be uh, reconciliation. You know, in, in the Bible, uh, Abraham has uh, two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. And, um, and, they are, they are apart, and they seem to be kind of enemies to each other. But some of the interpretations say that, no, that eventually um, they, they were reconciled. Yeah. Because when it talks about the death of Abraham, it said they both came Liberty. to bury him. So that they were, so that interpretation is there, is that, that they did find reconciliation. And there are the seas of reconciliation, just as there are the seas of destruction. And uh, we don't really know which side will win in the short term. Though we believe that eventually um, peace and, and um, goodness and mercy will prevail mm -hmm. in the world. But you know, here in our world today, we have a lot of both. We have countries with nuclear weapons, and more countries seem to be getting them, and uh, all kinds of threatening And we're paying for them in, in some cases. Yeah, all kind of threatening situations yeah. that um, 
could really destroy the world as we know about it. But on the other hand, we have a lot of cooperation, a lot of goodness, a lot of kindness. But it only takes a couple. Of, win. It only takes a couple of characters to mess it up. That's I, true. I, I tell people, I says, we live in a time wherever you live on this planet, we can drop you with a, miss, with a missile. There's no place to hide, no place to go. Even parts of space, they could hit you. I mean, we are in a play in a time when if we don't change, the whole thing's going to fall apart. Right. So, uh, how do you think we could go about the change? Well, you may, this may sound harsh, but I think people who just keep doing the, ba the bad things should not be taken uh, should be taken seriously. If a person does a certain type of crime, like he murders somebody, you don't let him out in five years. And I mean, in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, the cities had a, a different way to, to keep the people lawful. If, if something happened, they broke the law somehow, whether it was a religious law or not, they would take the, the person to the elders at the gate. Now, you needed at least two witnesses, as far as I know, that would have to swear that this is what happened, right? And then if they found them guilty, they took them outside the city, and they killed them. But here's the case. It's interesting about it. If it turns out that the witnesses lied, they were killed too. Right. Now... It kind of sounds kind of harsh, but maybe that's what people need to see in the courts and other places and even in international things. We can't keep pat saying to people, oh, you're doing a great job. In the meantime, you're killing half the p your own people. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to get together. Let's put it this way. If good people don't come together, no matter who they are, we'll never solve the problem. Right. And I think that's a part of the thought of the Israelis in Gaza that Hamas and their ideologies are the problem and they don't leave space for um, good people to get together and do good and that's uh, mm -hmm. and maybe if they are put out of power other things can develop and there can be harmony again we have the beginnings of it with the, um, uh, with the uh, accords with the Gulf states and Israel and other Arab countries that in the past were enemies of Israel. Um, for example, a country where they're not warm friends with, but they fought several wars, is Egypt. Yeah. And, and yet the relationships, relationships- That goes back a ways. Wi wi with Israel and Egypt are, 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 uh, mm -hmm. are, for, are for the most part pretty peaceful and yeah. harmonious. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, but I think people have to really work at it and not and not give up. And I, that's a difficult thing to do in, in hard situations. It's either that or everybody's gone, hmm. and that's the, that's the way it's going to be. We can't just keep playing games with these things, because if it's not a war, it's going to be something they're going to put into the air or whatever. Who knows? Yeah. Well, I think uh, we, God created a good world, and that's one of the cardinal beliefs of Judaism. And it's Christianity up to us, too, yeah. It's up to us to see that it remains a good world or to emphasize and to bring out the goodness in that world. I agree with you. You and I should start it, maybe, huh? Okay, <laughs> great. I always enjoy talking to you. And again, I want to want to thank you for coming and thank uh, uh, Reggie for yes. inviting me. Reggie's a great guy. In yeah. fact, he's the kind of guy you're looking for. Uh -huh. He's bringing people together. Right. And once we come together, we find out we have the same problems and yeah. the same hate and so on. And many of the same ideas and beliefs as well. Yes, Not true. Not everything, but yeah. a lot. Yeah. Enough to make us like this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs>